Okay, Bismillah. Okay, folks, welcome back. This next section, this next session, is a bonus session. We're going to be looking at some examination questions, looking uh, at the transformation of functions. Grade A, A star topic. So, question number twenty. This is examination question. The graph of y equals f of x, which is the cubic function, is shown on the grids. On this grid, sketch the graph of y equals f of x minus one. So now they want to go from this curve to fx minus 1. Now, as we said in the previous videos, as f of x, when we now put the change inside the function, it has an effect in a particular direction. Now minus 1, you think about minus on the, on the number line that goes towards the left, it's actually, in this particular instance, it's the opposite of that. You have to move the whole graph to the right, by that amount. So we're going to get each point, so that's at minus 2, and move it to minus 1. So at 0, the y value is 2, so at 1, we're going to move it to 2 to there. So I'm going to plot these points. So what we're going to do is grab each major point on the original function and move it across by. 1 to the right. So minus 1 means move everything to the right by 1. Okay. Let's carry on with the red first of all. There we go. So that 1 goes to a 2. This one here goes to there. Okay. This point here goes to here. Minus four is around about here. And so that one there is going to go to just before there, about right there. So let's put circles around what we're going to plot. Okay, let's see if we've got enough to plot the new stream blue. Okay, and there we have it. So we're done with graph points by looking at it, making points and moving them across by one. So the black original function, f of x, has now moved, we've literally translated it one place along the x-axis, and that's what it means by f of x minus one. So that's done, that's the blue one. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. The next one, this is part A, question number 20, part B. What they want us to do uh, is to draw y is equal to 2 f of x. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rub this one off and I'm use the same graph again. Rather than moving the graph up. So let's just get rid of this now. So that's the original question is, oops. f of x, we have to now do y is equal to 2 f of x. Okay, so now the multiply, we've got to multiply in front of the function. The function hasn't been changed. In the previous question, we put a minus 1 inside the function and that changed it by moving across translators, right? Now that we've got the 2 at the front, it's a multiplier. What we're going to do now, we're now going to double each y value. So let's find some y values in the major points. So we've got a y value of x value is minus 2, the y value is 0. So now, when you multiply a 0 by 2, it stays there. So put a square around that. Here's another 0 value. So when x is 1, y is 0. And if you double a 0, it stays at 0. So those two points on the original function will stay where they are. Everything else will move. Now, when x is 0, the f of x is 2. Now, we have to double that 2. That 2 becomes a 4. 
Okay, that two goes to four. All right, let's have a look. So if it's two. Okay, so minus three, the y value f of x is two, and if we double the two, we get two four. So that point, we grab a point here, that will go to there. So I'm going to plot that point, that point, this point goes up here, that point, okay, that point stays there. So I'm picking a point from here, translate it over there, and that one stays there, that point goes up there, and that point stays there. Now let's have a look at another point. Okay, let's have a look at two. So we have, for example, one and a half. So one and a half along the x has a y value of minus two. And we need to double that minus two to give us minus four. So that point there will go to here. Okay, now let's try to draw, draw a nice curve. lines here. I'll just do my working out so I can see where to put the points. Now as you can see what's happened over here the points which are on the x-axis which have a zero value of the y value is zero when we double that value you still get a zero so these two points are the pivoting points and center stay there but everything else has got more steeper so the graphs kind of moved up moved in so this part that was black here has now moved to the blue part part that was going here has now moved up and higher, doubled in value, then it's come back down. This part which went out of here, the black part, is coming more steeper, more tighter, blue part over there. So the blue part now is your y is equal to 2 of f of x, and that, and that examination question is now complete. The total for that question was 4 marks. Okay, you can see that over here. Total is 4 marks. Total for the paper is 100 marks in that question. Alright, let's have a look at some more exam questions. Alright, just pop off the board. Okay, right. Here's another examination question. Examination question. Diagram 1 is a sketch. Diagram 1. Sketch of a part of the graph of y is equal to sine of x. So before we go any further, we should know, you go into the examination, the main points of a sine function. So for example, we should know that the maximum amplitude of a sine function is 1. And the minimum, symmetrically also, is going to be minus 1. We know that, the, that one cycle of a sine curve goes over 360 degrees. And halfway would be 180 degrees, and half of that would be 90. So this is some of the basics that we should know how to be able to quickly and easily label up a sine uh, curve. Okay, so it goes starts from zero, goes to 360. Maximum is the height is one, the minimum is minus one. Question says write down the coordinates of p. Once we've done that, coordinates of P should be straightforward. So coordinates of P are here. So first of all, when you do coordinates against, even though it's not your standard Cartesian coordinates, we have X values and Y values, and you don't get plotting points and stuff. It doesn't look like that, but it actually is a graph where we have X values and Y values. So the first X value is 90. So it's 90 along the x and the p will be 1 along the y. So that's the answer for the first question. Write down the coordinates of p. Write down the coordinates of q. Well, q is right there at 180 degrees mark. So that's your x value. So you've got to travel 180 degrees across. Okay, and the height there, it hasn't moved off the x axis, so it'll be just 0. And that's worth 2 marks to be able to reproduce this in examination. 
Okay, now, in order for me to do the next part of the question, I'm going to have to rub this part out and move it up. So please bear with me. To the sketch of part of the graph y equals 3 cos 2x. Okay, so before we go any further, let's look at the main points of this function as the height is being changed. First of all, the original cos function has got a 2 inserted in the function, which squeezes the graph down, and then it has a 3 in the outside of multiplier, which then stretches it. So this first two. Squeezes the graph down. The three at the outside, then after you squeeze it down, so we're doing by a factor of two first and then by a factor of three. So let's have a look at that. Now, if we squeeze down the original cos function to a factor of two, what that means is the cos function normally goes from zero to 360. That's the normal cos function for one cycle. When you squeeze it down by a factor of two by putting two in there, that is now going to be the same graph going to be contained within 180 degrees in half the amount of space. That's what that 2 does there. Next, after we've squeezed the graph down to take half the space along the x-axis, the 3 in the outside of the multiplier is now going to stretch the graph along the y-axis. So what was normally at 1 and minus 1 for the normal height, the maximum height for the uh, cos graph and the minimum minus one being the minimum is now the, going to be acted on by the multiplier three. So three times by three times by one is three, and three times by minus one is minus three. Okay, so that's how that changes. So we have now applied both of those changes to the original graph by resizing the by recalibrating the axis. Write down the coordinates of R. So let's have a look. If that's 180 the full cycle, then the middle part will be 90 and half of 90 again will be 45. Okay. Okay, so that's 45, 45, 45, 45. So the whole function is now contained within half the space and still symmetrical. So R has a coordinate of 45 degrees along the x coordinate and 0 along the y. So that's going to be 45. Zero. Okay, that's R done. Write down the coordinates of S. Well, S is over here. So S we're going to go across by 90 and down by minus 3. Okay, and that's the end of that question. And that question, as you can see from over here, is worth a total of 4 marks, 2 marks for this question. One mark is the one mark for the one we just on top. Okay, folks, well, let's keep on going with some a sketch of the curve y equals sine of x for uh, x is greater than equal to 0 and less than 360. So that's a one complete sine curve, one cycle. Maximum 1, minimum minus 1, and here's the normal 90, 182, 73, 60 on there. Using the sketch above or otherwise, find the equation of each of the following two curves. Okay, now, from here... We have to explain to the examiner how we got from here to there. Now if you look at it here, this was originally 0, that point. That point is now 1, it's gone up by 1. This 180 was on the 0 line. That 180 is now up here, again on the 1 line. So it's gone up by 1. So what they've done here, we've got the original function graph and we've just grabbed it and pushed it up by one, literally everything up by one. And we've got this new graph here. So this graph here, in that case, is going to be our original function y is equal to sin of x. Okay, and here comes the part that we've changed. 
the plus one that we move the whole graph up by doesn't go at the front, doesn't go inside the function, but it goes completely outside the function. So that stays unchanged and then plus a one. That's, that's how we go from here to there. See here in this particular function, the original graph, if I quickly draw the original one for you. The original one normally peaks at one and it minus one. That's the original sign function, the blue one, which I've just drawn on there on top of there for you. So we have to say, how did the original blue one become the black one that they've given us? So what they've done here to the function, they have got the original function and multiplied everything by two. So the two goes on the outside over here at the front as a multiplier. So the zero value obviously is zero times by two is still zero. The zero times by two, the height of zero, and that will give you still zero. So these points stay. Now 90 gave us normally a 1, and that one got doubled to a 2. There you go. The sine of 270 gave us minus 1, but now that's been doubled from minus 1 to minus 2. So that's the multiply effect. So we're stretching the graph along the y-axis. And that's what that is. Okay. All right, let's come back, folks. We look at this next examination question. We are looking at transformation of functions. So here we have a cubic function which is being given to us as general term as f of x. It says the graph of the function y with f of x is shown on the grid. Here it is. Your y axis and here's your x axis. The point P which is here minus 1 and not by 5 lies on the curve. What we need to do is they're going to give us three different scenarios. On each of the grids, draw the graph of the transform function. In each case, write down the coordinates of the transform point P. So, what they want us to do, they're gonna, they want us to transform this function in three different ways, and they're gonna tell us what to do. And we need to tell the examiner exactly where this point end up. Now, we've got to move the graph around. What I'm gonna do now to make it easy for everybody, I'm, I'm gonna copy this graph from here, onto the three other templates that they give us in the question with the three questions, the three separate scenarios. So I'm going to copy this up uh, in a colour and then I'm going to transform that. It'll be easier for me rather than looking up here and then trying to transform it down here, trying to explain it to be easier. So bear with me for the moment. I'm going to move this graph up onto the blank one and copy across at the same time. Okay, here we go. So the first point we're going to copy up is over here. That's that point is not here. That point is here. So I'm copying these points from here. So that one's going to be here. I'm copying that point up there. And I'm copying this point over here. And this point over here. Right about there, and four is over here, and this point over here. Money. Yep. Okay, so we're making this video, right? So we've got. I'm gonna put dotted lines over here. So as you can see from above here, this are, So as you can see, folks, this original curve here has been copied up in red dotted lines here. Because when we're going to do the transformation, we really need to be able to see the original function here and then do the transformation to it rather than looking up here and trying to do it on a blank one here. That's quite difficult. Okay, let's have a go at it now. Okay, right. Here we go. I'll just choose the right colour. Yeah, that will do. So y equals f of x plus 3. So we have our original function f of x, which is this one. And we're going, to, we're going to transform it by f of x plus 3, f of x. Now, I'm going to put the plus 3 inside here to show you exactly what we mean by that. So, the plus 3 is here. Okay, now, when we put the, when you put the number, the change inside the function, that has a very specific type of change. A plus 3, you think of the number line as plus 3, we're going towards the right-hand side. This plus 3 means opposite, it means you move the whole function 
translated three places, three uh, place values, for example, uh, for example, we've got zero, one, two, three, so three, three boxes to the left in this case, because the grid is, one grid is equal to one value. So we're going to move the whole function here, I'm going to grab it and drag it across by three. So we're going to move everything to the left by three, three places. Okay, plus three means move it to the left, three. If it's minus three, it means move it to the right by three. So let's start doing the movement now. So let's grab each point. So minus two, <coughs> if we take away another three, we'll end up at minus five. <coughs> so this point here is going to go three across, one, two, three, it's going to be over there. That point will go three across, one, two, three, go across there. This point here is going to go three to the left, one, two, three, it's going to be over here. Okay? This point here, three to the left, Okay, that one's going to be from there. Okay, hold on one second. Alright, so that's this one. One, two, three. There. Okay. Now, then we're going to have, for example, this point here. One, two, three. There. those points. Okay, now we have this point here. So one, two, three. It's going to go there. That one there. One, two, three. It's going to go there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to rub off all the extra the kind of jumpy bits. Okay. And hopefully now we should get something that resembles the original curve. And we could do, for example, this one here. One, two, three. All right, let's get all the other little bits and pieces. All right, let's try that now. function was the dotted red one which has been copied from above there down to here. The original point P was at was at minus one five and we now need to tell the examiner where has that point P gone to. So that minus one has become minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. So it's now at minus four along the X and the height hasn't changed so it's still five. So that's the first one done. Okay folks, that's f of x, this one here, which has been copied here in dotted red. And then we've applied the transformation f of x plus 3 inside the function, which grabs the whole function, translated three places to the left. Okay, that's the end of the first part. There's two more parts. So I'm going to rub this off. I'm going to move to the second part. We're going to, we're going to draw another dotted red one again to represent the original function and then we'll do transformation. So I'm just going to quickly copy it across. I'm going to do it in dotted lines. Okay. What I'm doing now, I'm looking at the original function given to us. And I'm tracing across. Let's quickly take a look. This is the original function here. So I copied this here onto the blank template so we can now attempt this question. Okay, here we go. Y is equal to 2 f of x. So this is our original function. Now we need to, by having the 2 in front of the function, so we have y is equal to f of x is the original, and y is equal to, by putting the number 2 in the beginning of the function, what we've done in actual fact, the examiner has 
question has it's made a multiplier so the function itself doesn't change but we multiply the end results the end values the y value we have to multiply it by two so let's have a look what happens to this to this function here starting from here so here we have for example at x is equal to three we have a y value of approximately say minus twelve Minus 12, if you double it, times it by 2, it is about minus 24, which would be around about, yeah, so that point goes to here. Now, at x equals minus 2, the y value is 0, at 0 times by 2 is still 0, so that point stays where it is. When x equals equal to 1, the y value is plus 5, plus 5 is the f of x, times by 2 will give us 10. So this point is doubled to 10. Again, it's another zero value. If f of x is zero, if the y value is zero, we double the zero value, we still get zero. So that stays there. So all the zero values stay exactly where they are, so that one stays as well. Now, the next significant value is at 2, x equals 2, y is minus 10. If you double minus 10, you get minus 20. Okay? That one stays there, that one stays there. The next value is going to be 5, which is 10, which becomes 20. So now we're going to try to redraw, redraw the graph now. Let's see how that goes. Alright, so we have... So let's have a look. We have to look at the p value. Remember that was the original p here. That p has now been transported to here. Okay, so we have to say now what is the p value? So we've got minus 1 along the x and up by 10 now. Okay, if you look at the graph, what's happened? The zero values have stayed exactly where they are. The peaks which were at 5 have now been doubled to 10. The gradient here has been made more steeper by the red line here. So as this curve was going down this, it's become more steeper. And again here, the minimum point of minus 10 has been doubled to minus 20. The zero points have stayed there. And the graph is going that way, we've got now a more steeper curve. That's our y is equal to 2 f of x. Okay, we have one more to draw on this question. This question is a three-part question. Now, y is equal to minus f of x. So, original function is f of x. And this new one is identical apart from minus. Now we need to know if you put a minus outside the function like that in the position of the multiplier, what does that do? That's the same as saying f of x multiplied by minus 1. So what that in fact does, it uses the x-axis as a mirror line. Whatever is above the graph gets inverted, whatever is the bottom of the graph gets inverted to the top. So let's quickly have a go at that. Remember, any point on the mirror line stays exactly as you have a normal reflection. Whenever you do a reflection question, if you have any points on the mirror line, they stay exactly where they are. So these two points are on the mirror line x-axis, so they stay there. Now, we need to invert all, everything else. So, we had at x at minus 1, we had a, an x value of 5. That becomes now minus 5. That gets flipped to the bottom. At minus 3, the x value was, so the y value was about minus 12. That gets reflected upwards to about plus 12. Okay. Alright. Now, at this point here, another significant point of the graph, we have an x is 2, y is minus 10. Minus 10 gets reflected to plus 10. So it's 10 away here, 10 away there. Okay, that point stays there. The next significant point of the graph is this point here, which is at x equals 5, y is equal to 10. That point gets reflected down to 10 above, 
a bit terminal. So we should now get a nice curve that looks like this. The question what they want us to work out that was the original P position, this is the new P position over here. So we have to fill in the bottom over here what the P position is. So it's going to be still minus 1 along the x, but now rather than being up by 5, it'll be down by 5. So that will be minus 1, minus 5. So P is minus 1, minus 5. Okay, folks. Thank you for joining us on these examination questions. Hope to help in your examination preparation. Okay, until the next video, see you then.